Hello, everybody, and welcome to Iceberg to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. The Penguins, they've fallen hard over the past week. Nazem Kadri essentially broke this team, or at least this team this season, with that highlight real goal that he was able to score last Saturday for the Calgary Flames that was the impetus to their comeback for their victory on Mika Kippersoft night over the Pittsburgh Penguins. And since then, the Penguins, while well, they've been outscored 24 to 7 in the games that have followed, buoyed by a 5 to 3 win over the, well, equally as miserable Columbus Blue Jackets this season, the Penguins have been shut out twice in that time span, and things are looking very, very bleak. Obviously, they sold off Jake Gensel on Friday, along with Chad Ruweedle. Players look to have thrown in the towel a bit at certain points throughout certain performances, and yet Mike Sullivan's message remains geared towards the Stanley Cup playoffs. Before their loss on Saturday to Boston on the Disney Channel game, the Big City Greens game, if you will, Sullivan reiterated the plan for this Penguins team moving forward into the final calendar month of the 2023-24 season, saying, quote, we're going to try and make the playoffs. The way to get there is focus on the game at hand, taking it game by game and trying to stack victories towards a comeback, a miraculous comeback into postseason contention. I think most people, and Nick Horwat, who's my co-host on Tip of the Iceberg, said this last week, most Penguins fans are smart enough to realize that the playoffs are somewhat of a pipe dream at this point, and by somewhat majority pipe dream at this point for the Penguins. They're in seventh place in the wild card race, Eight points behind the second wild card spot, which right now is being held by the New York Islanders. Zero games in hand is the big thing. Ten points behind the Philadelphia Flyers for the third place position in the Metropolitan Division with only two games in hand. And if you look at it right now, they have a higher percent chance of landing the first overall pick in 2024 which is set to be Macklin Celebrini at 6% chance as of right now, than they do to make the playoffs according to moneypuck.com, which is 3.5% chance. So with all of that being said, the thought process has to shift for the Penguins and for Mike Sullivan. And I think it has. Now, they're not going to come out and they're not going to say it. They're not going to say, hey, we've punted on this season. The playoffs are out of reach. They're trying to continue to have spirits high in that locker room because they have to play what? 18, 19, 20 more games, depending on when you listen to this podcast. They need to continue to have these players have something to hold on to. Now, again, similar to the fan base, these players aren't stupid. They know that the battle they have to climb to even get into contention for the playoffs is so drastic, is so huge, that it's going to take a mini miracle for them to even get back into the picture at this point. Hence the reason you need to look towards the future. The new focus needs to be learning as much as humanly possible about some of these guys for next season, about some of these newer guys that you have that you could potentially look towards to begin next season. That's why somebody like Yesapul Yarvi might sit a little bit in the next month or so. Not because, well, the Penguins know everything about Yesapul Yarvi. He's only played 11 games in a Penguins uniform, but... There's a reason they gave this guy a two-year contract. He has a proven track record at the NHL level. They're trying to see more about guys like a Jonathan Gruden, who's on an expiring contract, will be a restricted free agent in the summer. They're trying to learn a little bit more about Valtteri Pustinen, who is on an expiring contract. He's played a lot more this year, but they're trying to learn as much as humanly possible. What positions can they put him in where he can handle it comfortably. They're trying to learn that in this last month of the season. They're trying to learn more about Emil Bemstrom, who they acquired last month from the Columbus Blue Jackets. He is also on an expiring deal, will be a restricted free agent. Yes, Puljuarvi signed that two-year contract for a reason. The Penguins knew that they wanted Puljuarvi to be part of the plan, part of the team next season. And yes, when it comes to those four players, has Puljuarvi performed better than Jonathan Gruden? Yes. Has Paul Yarvey performed better than Emil Bemstrom? Yes. Would he get them closer to winning hockey games than having some of these other guys in the lineup? Yeah, probably. But Mike Sullivan knows. He won't say it outwardly, but he knows. The odds of the Penguins making the playoffs are slim to none. And the directive 
from Kyle Dubas is likely we need to see what we have in some of these guys that we have to make a decision on this summer. Are they going to tender qualifying offers to Bemstrom and Gruden and Pustinen? And if they do, what do they want in return? What do they see as the future of these three players and maybe another one heading into next season? It's all about learning over the final month of the season, all about looking towards the future, looking towards next season and seeing what you have in some of these guys. That way, if a guy like Valtteri Pustinen proves over the next 18 games that, hey, he is a top six guy at the National Hockey League. He has steps to take still, but he's somebody that the Penguins can count on heading into next season. Then you don't have to go out in free agency or you don't have to go out in the trade market and spend a whole lot of money or spend a whole lot of assets to bring in somebody to play with, whether it be Malkin on the second line or whether it be Crosby on the first line. If he's a guy that has shown that can be good on the power play, I think he's looked great on the power play this season. So if he does that and continues to do that over this month with maybe a couple more opportunities in game than he's gotten so far this season, then you know you can count on him heading into next season and pencil him in as we talked about and asked about on our weekly pens poll. And we'll talk about more tomorrow on tip of the iceberg. Can you pencil him in as an NHL roster player heading into training camp? Not saying that he has to be penned in as the guy next to Evgeny Malkin on that second line where he spent the majority of time over the past couple of weeks, but saying going into camp, that's going to be our plan A is Valtteri Pustin. Could somebody younger come in and, and take his spot? Yeah, potentially. But is he going to be the guy that they rely on? Is he going to be the guy plan A that they go through the offseason saying this is going to be one of our top six guys? Yeah. And that's why a guy like Yesapul Yarvi, who has a proven track record in the NHL, has played multiple full seasons at the National Hockey League level and has that extra year already. That's why he's going to eat some healthy scratches down the stretch. Would it be nice to get him some more playing time, especially after missing so much time last offseason into the beginning of this season, recovering from that double hip surgery? Yes, you'd like him to get up to that speed. But at the same time, from an overall perspective, you know what he's going to bring night in and night out. And... According to, you know, the Penguins, his healthy scratches have not been due to any lingering issues from that surgery. So this is what it is likely to be. They need to get better looks at some of the other guys around him because he has that contract in hand. He has that one extra year. They know what he is. They know he's going to be back. They know he's part of the plan. But how big of a part of the plan is Jonathan Gruden going to be? Is Valtteri Pustinen going to be? Is Emil Bemstrom going to be? Because honestly... To be completely fair, I haven't seen much from Emil Bemstrom that tells me that he should be part of the Penguins' plan going into next season, at least not part of the starting plan going into next season. Maybe he's similar to a Vinny Henestrosa, but a little bit younger, where, yeah, this is an AHL call-up type of guy. I don't see him as an NHL regular going into next season. And if the Penguins do, maybe they see something I don't. I just haven't seen that in his performance to this point. And there's another name that I do want to mention that should go along the same lines with Gruden and Pustin and Bemstrom over this last month of the season. Somebody who is going to be a restricted free agent when this offseason comes around. That's Sam Poulin. That is the Penguins' first overall, or not first overall, their first pick of the 2019 NHL draft. He was selected, I believe, 21st in that draft. Back from injury at the American Hockey League level. He has a couple games underneath his belt now since that return from injury has 24 points in 30 games played this season, and a lot of people have been clamoring to bring Poulain up. A lot of people have been asking in the comment section, why hasn't he been pulled up? A lot of it's his, it's timing. He was injured at the beginning of the season, so when those injuries occurred early in the season, the first time Nolachari was out, Poulain was just getting back into the swing of things. Then he went red hot for a little while. And then by the time Nolachari got injured again, what would have been, what would have been the opportunity for Poulain to come up Poulin was out again with an injury. Now he's back. The Penguins have practically punted on the season. I think you got to make some space for Sam Poulin to figure out what you have with him at the NHL level. He's only played three games at the NHL level in his entire career, and that was last year at the beginning of the season, a three-game stint in the first month, and there has been so much that has happened since then. There has been his break to deal with his mental health issues, to deal with his mental status, as a person, he came back. He had a half-decent season where he only had a couple of games at the end of the year. He had a great summer. 
He had a really good prospect camp. He had a really good training camp. Then he gets injured at the beginning of this season with that high ankle sprain, comes back, looks great again. And then he goes out with injury, comes back, and guess what? He's making some plays. He's making some highlights. He's looking great again. When he's been on the ice this year, he's looked very good at the American Hockey League level. The problem has been he hasn't been available when the Penguins have had opportunities to call him up and give him a chance. Now, the Penguins, they have an opportunity to call him up and give him a chance, and he's healthy and available. I think it's the perfect time to bring him up, get him some time, maybe a 10-game sample size to see what he is at the National Hockey League level. Here's the quotes from Kyle Dubas. Nick Horwat asked him at the beginning of the year, right after training camp, right before puck dropped on the opening of the season, he said, do you see Sam Poulin getting an opportunity to have some extended looks at the National Hockey League level? That's what Horwat asked Kyle Dubas, and here was his response. Quote, if Sam keeps on stacking days and weeks as he has in training camp, he's going to push himself to earn his way back to the National Hockey League roster. Now, he started the year with an injury, but like I said, when he's been on the ice, he stacked those performances. He stacked and built off of what he started in prospect camp, in training camp. He's built to be one of the best and most important players on that Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins team. And the upcoming playoff run for them is going to be huge for him and the way the organization sees him. But between now and then, you have to give him some looks at the National Hockey League level. I think that is a, a, a imperative for the Penguins at this point. Another quote from that same press conference, that same answer was, quote, could I see him spending significant time in the NHL this season? Absolutely. Like I mentioned, he probably would have already had a couple games under his belt if he was healthy at certain points throughout the season. But when he's been healthy, he's been great. I think this is the time you get to see that significant time over the, the remainder of March, the beginning of April. He needs to join that group of Jonathan Gruden, well, Terry Pustinen and Emil Bemstrom at the NHL level because the Penguins need to know what they have in them. They need to know if they can count on him to be maybe a third line center. Maybe if you bring him up and he's really good, you put him at third line center. And as we've said multiple times this season, maybe you drop Lars Eller down to the fourth, you move Nolachari to the wing where he is at his best, and you see if that produces some better results for the Penguins at the beginning of next season. But at the end of the day, this is a scouting mission for the rest of the season for the Penguins. The playoffs are out of the picture. This is a scouting mission to see who could be a part of next year's team and where Kyle Dubas needs to go this offseason when addressing the National Hockey League roster, primarily at the forward position. You notice we haven't brought up any defensemen. It's because there's not a lot of young defensemen at the AHL level that could really come up and make that same impact that these guys can next season. Gruden, Pustinen, Benstrom, pool in. You need to see a lot from all of them. And because of that, you're probably going to see a little bit less from Yesa Yarvi as the season progresses now into the final stages of the 2023-24 season. That's my prediction. That's where I think the Penguins should go with this. But at the end of the day, we'll have to just watch and see. Penguins, man, they need to have a little bit more life than they've had over the past week. Like I mentioned, outscored 24-7 to and five of those seven goals came in one game against Columbus, so it's not been pretty. Bring up some of these young guys, give the fans a little taste of what is to come and, and hope that that taste is something positive. But that's going to do it for this episode of Iceberg to Go. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and remember you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from.